Hey everybody, this is just a quick guide I'm putting together to show how I got my non-supported flight stick working with Ace Combat 7 on the PC. Now right now there is some controversy about the lack of flight stick support for this game on PC. At the moment it only officially supports the Thrustmaster T-Flight HOTAS and Hori HOTAS lines of sticks. So that's pretty disappointing, but I didn't want to give up without trying to make it work anyway. So I tried a bunch of things without much success, but I finally did find something that worked for me. So what you're going to want to do is go to www.x360ce.com. This is an Xbox 360 controller emulator for PC. You want to download the correct version for your system. I use the 64-bit version, and for most of you that's probably going to be the one you'll want to use as well. But if you do still have a 32-bit operating system, you can use the 32-bit version. Once you've downloaded it, you'll have a zip folder, and inside will be the program. And you're going to want to put that in the games folder next to the exe. Now, in order to get here, I have it on Steam, so I went to the library in Steam, right-clicked on it, chose Properties, and then I went to the Local Files tab and chose to browse Local Files, and that took me here. So once you find the games folder, go ahead and drop this in there with it, and go ahead and launch it. Now the instructions online said to do all of this before you launch the game, but bear with me, there's a reason I do have the game running. So the first message you're going to get is this DLL file was not found, so go ahead and create it. And now it's going to go through all of your connected devices. So it found my HOTAS first. We're going to leave it on search automatically for settings and search the internet. And it found the settings. And we'll go through the rest of them real quick. So we're going to go over to the Controller 1 tab, which is my X52 HOTAS. And you can see it automatically found a lot of the buttons, but we're going to go ahead and change most of these because I don't necessarily like what it did at first. And like I said, I have an X52. If you have a different stick, this may or may not detect everything as well. If it doesn't detect everything, I'm going to show you how to set it all up. So the really important ones here are the triggers and bumpers, because those are the hardest ones to get working right. You can see here the trigger is set to move with my throttle. So if I move my throttle up and down, it's giving me trigger inputs. And you can see that they say H-axis and IH-axis. And that's half axis and inverted half axis. Basically what it's doing is it's splitting the axis up into two separate ranges that can be two different inputs. If you're not sure what your throttle axis is or any other button or axis for that matter, click on it and do record and then move it and it'll find it. So we're going to go ahead and set this. Uh, if we were going to set it up manually, we would click on it. We would go to axes, and in this case, go to half axis at three. And the same thing on the other side with the inverted one. Now, you may need to play with this, it may be one way or the other for yours. And then we can also go over to the advanced tab, and you can see that there's dead zones for each of the triggers. And I'm going to set up a 5% dead zone on each one because I want there to be a notch in the middle where it has neutral input. Then if we take a look at the bumpers, they're set up the same way, but they're using an axis on my stick. Uh, it has a twist axis. If you twist it to the right right now, it gives you the right bumper, and left gives you the left bumper. If you do set it up this way, you can also go to this axis to button tab, and you'll see that they get listed here. And they do have dead zones as well, but I'm going to leave those alone for now. So let's take a look at the other buttons. Now you have your face buttons here, and these are really easy to set up. You just hit record on them, click the button on your stick that you want, and we'll go through each of those. Most of these are already right. And this is the reason that I left the game open, because if you want a reference, 
you can go to options, go to controls, and you get a diagram of an Xbox 360 controller. So we've already set button one and two up. Uh, we'll set up these as well. This option down here is for the stick button. That's if you clicked in the right stick. And then these are all to set up the right stick. And I'm going to set them up as one of my hats. Now one thing you're going to notice here is when I do this, uh, it's hitting the right stick, but it's also hitting the D-pad. And that's because it detected that hat as a D-pad. And there is a D-pad option where you can just set a pad as your D-pad. I don't want to use that, so I'm going to turn it off. And now it's just doing the stick. So we'll set the D-pad up manually using one of my other hats. We'll do the back and start buttons as well. And the left stick button. And then if you did need to set up your stick axis, you could do it with these. It's the same thing. Uh, it's using axis 1 for the x-axis and inverted axis 2 for the y-axis. You may need to play with those to get the correct response out of it. And that's everything here. This is now set up. So we're going to go ahead and save it. And we're going to exit. And we're going to go ahead and exit out of the game. And then we're going to go ahead and relaunch it. And it's going to load those configuration settings. So far, so good. That was the trigger. Let's just do a quick free mission just to test the settings. Actually, I'm just going to do a free flight. All right, here we go. Okay. Looks like roll, pitch, and yaw are working good. Firing and switching is good. Views looking good. Changing the view, changing the map. And fire flares. And we can pause. All right, so that's looking good. Everything is working now, and I can play the game with my stick. Now again, I have only tested this with my X52, so if you try this with your stick and it works, think about leaving a comment to confirm it and mention any quirks you may have run into while setting it up on that model. Also, if you're having trouble with it or if it's not working, leave a comment, and hopefully we can all work together to help get it working so we can all enjoy the game the way we want it. That's it, everybody. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. Have a good one, and see you in-game.